You thought 500 horsepower was extreme? That's rookie numbers. In 2015, Seven Marine took a supercharged Cadillac V8 and turned it into an outboard. 627 horsepower from a single motor. It cracked transoms, boiled cooling systems, and made engineers question their sanity. But it ran and it changed everything. Today, we're diving into the machines that went too far. Engines so powerful, so extreme, they broke the rules of marine design and still somehow worked. Let's light them up. Let's start with the outboard that started a revolution. The 7 Marine 627, a 6.2 liter supercharged Cadillac V8 that changed what outboards could be. 627 horsepower from a single outboard motor. When it was introduced, it massively outclassed conventional outboards and forced boat builders to completely rethink transom loads, cooling requirements, and driveline gearing. This was the first time a Cadillac-derived supercharged V8 was packaged as a production outboard. You could just walk into a dealer and buy it. The engineering required to make this work was staggering. The cooling system alone drew more water than some entire boats. The gear case had to handle torque that would destroy standard outboard drives. And the weight, over 1,100 pounds, meant transoms needed structural reinforcement just to support it. But it worked. And it proved that outboard power was not limited by some natural law. The engine was limited by imagination and the willingness to solve very difficult engineering problems. Seven Marines showed that if you were crazy enough to try, you could build an outboard that made 600 plus horsepower and do it reliably. Let's move to when Mercury decided, enough was not enough. Mercury looked at what Seven Marine accomplished and said, we can do that too, but bigger. The result was the Verado V12, a 7.6 liter V12 outboard producing 600 horsepower. A V12 powerhead in an outboard pushed displacement and packaging into completely new territory. This engine uses a two-speed transmission and a steerable gear case, creating ultra-high power capability for very large center consoles. Think about what that means. 12 cylinders are arranged in a V configuration. Hanging off the back of a boat, the engineering challenges are enormous. Balance, cooling, weight distribution. The V12 configuration helps spreading the mass more evenly than an inline design would. But Mercury still had to develop entirely new mounting systems, cooling circuits, and drive components to make it work. The Verado V12 represents the current apex of production outboard power. 600 horsepower from a package you can buy from a dealer. And boats are being built specifically to handle triple or quad installations of these monsters, putting 1,800 to 2,400 horsepower on transoms. The speeds these setups achieve would have been impossible without outboard power just a decade ago. Then, the workhorse with a jet engine's heart. Mercury didn't stop at luxury speedboats. They took that same 7.6 liter V12 and created the C-Pro version, marketed as a commercial and industrial outboard rated up to 500 horsepower. Bringing very large displacement and continuous duty capability to outboard workboats was unusual for the category. Most commercial outboards topped out around 150 to 200 horsepower. The C-Pro V12 more than doubled that. This engine was designed for applications where downtime costs serious money. Commercial fishing, patrol boats, offshore supply vessels. These, operators need engines that can run hard all day, every day, season after season. The C-Pro V12 delivers that with industrial grade components, enhanced cooling, and systems designed for extended operation at high load. Taking race level power and making it reliable enough for commercial use represents a different kind of engineering achievement. Let's talk about the stern drive that redefined what recreational means. Before Mercury was building 600 horsepower outboards, they were building 600 horsepower stern drives. The racing 600 SCI stern drive package for performance boats meant handling, drivetrain, and transom engineering had to be completely rethought. This level of power in stern drive form was once unthinkable for recreational craft. Stern drives, also called inboard outboards, have the engine inside the boat with a drive unit that pivots for steering. Getting 600 horsepower through that drivetrain requires components that can handle enormous torque while still being light enough not to sink the stern. Mercury developed specialized gears, shafts, and gimbal systems that could survive continuous operation at power levels that would destroy standard stern drive components in minutes. Now to the race DNA that hit the water. 
Mercury's race-derived outboards, the 450R and 400R, brought supercharged V8 and V10 power to production outboards used on performance center consoles and high-speed recreational craft. 450 horsepower and 400 horsepower respectively from engines that look like outboards but perform like purpose-built racing power plants. These engines challenge hulls and propeller selection in the same way race engines do. You can't bolt them on and expect everything to work. The hull needs to be designed to handle the acceleration. The props need to be custom matched to deliver power efficiently at the speeds these engines enable. The fuel systems need to supply enormous volumes of gasoline under high pressure. These are complete propulsion systems, not just engines. Not every monster relied on boost. The Ilmor 7.4-liter MPI stands alone as the most powerful, naturally aspirated, catalyzed production marine engine of its class. 522 horsepower without forced induction. No supercharger. No turbocharger. Just displacement, breathing, and race engineering expertise adapted from Ilmor's IndyCar pedigree. Getting 522 horsepower from a naturally aspirated engine requires near-perfect combustion efficiency. The intake and exhaust systems need to flow massive volumes of air with minimal restriction. The fuel injection needs to deliver precise mixtures across all operating conditions. The engine management needs to optimize ignition timing constantly. Ilmor achieved all of this while meeting emissions standards, which makes the accomplishment even more impressive. Most manufacturers use forced induction to reach these power levels because it's easier and more cost-effective. Ilmor proved you could do it without boost, but only if you were willing to apply race-level engineering to every component. The result is an engine that delivers staggering power with throttle response that supercharged engines can't match. Let's move to the world of yacht diesels, where too powerful becomes the sales pitch. The MTU Series 2000 delivers multi-thousand horsepower per engine in compact yacht packages. The 12 cylinder variants reach over 2000 horsepower, enabling very high speeds and acceleration for large leisure yachts. This sort of power was once reserved exclusively for military craft. MTU achieved these output levels through sophisticated turbocharging, advanced fuel injection, and materials engineering. These engines run at cylinder pressures and temperatures that would destroy lesser designs. The cooling systems are massive. The fuel consumption is measured in gallons per minute, not per hour. But for yacht owners who want to move 100-foot boats at 50 knots, MTU provides the solution. Now to an engine that delivers similar power, but with the elegance yacht owner demands. MAN's V12 yacht engines bring nearly 2,000 horsepower in packaged yacht propulsion solutions. Horsepower figures that in prior decades existed only in specialized military and commercial power plants. The V12-1900 represents decades of heavy-duty diesel engineering adapted for marine leisure use. What makes these engines remarkable is not the power output alone, but the refinement. Yacht owners expect smooth operation, low vibration, and reasonable noise levels. Delivering 1900 horsepower while meeting those expectations requires extraordinary attention to balance, isolation, and exhaust management. MAN solved these problems by treating yacht propulsion as a system, not just an engine installation. Then we have the Caterpillar C32 V12 marine engine. This engine reaches up to 1900 to 2400 horsepower depending on rating. These compact high horsepower V12 diesels are used in fast commercial and leisure craft. They illustrate how industrial power plants were adapted into yacht propulsion, heavy, powerful and intimidating to install. Caterpillar built their reputation on construction equipment and industrial power generation. Those environments demand reliability above all else. When CAT adapted that technology for marine use, they brought that industrial durability with them. The C-32 might not be the lightest or most refined yacht engine, but operators who need maximum reliability at high power levels keep choosing it. And of course, when boats get even bigger, the engines stop pretending. The C-280 family powers large commercial vessels and can be rated in the thousands of horsepower range. Multiple configurations exist, V8, V12, V16, all delivering output that makes you think this belongs in a shipyard, not a marina. These are engines sized for ships, not boats. 
When you need to move a 200-foot vessel at displacement speeds or push a heavy workboat through rough seas, the C-2080 family delivers. These engines weigh tons, plural. Installation requires cranes and structural reinforcement of the entire engine room. But for applications where nothing smaller will do the job, Caterpillar provides solutions that work. Now, we enter truly absurd territory. The GELM 2500 is an aerodrivative marine gas turbine rated in the tens of thousands of shaft horsepower. This engine powers warships and fast ferries. Putting this in any recreational context is absurdly overspecced. It shows the gulf between military propulsion and leisure boating. The LM2500 derives from aircraft jet engines. The core technology was designed to push aircraft to high altitudes and speeds. Adapted for marine use, it delivers power to weight ratios that diesels can't approach. A gas turbine can go from idle to full power in seconds. It can run continuously at maximum output and it produces power levels that diesel engines need multiple cylinders and massive displacement to match. The cost, complexity, and fuel consumption make gas turbines impractical for anything but military and specialized commercial applications. But they prove what's possible when power becomes the only priority. Also, Rolls-Royce didn't want to be left out. The Rolls-Royce MT-30 marine gas turbine is sized in tens of megawatts, roughly 36 to 40 megawatts of power. That translates to tens of thousands of horsepower, pure naval engineering. The shock value comes from imagining this power on any civilian boat. The MT-30 powers some of the world's most advanced warships. It delivers acceleration and top speed that allow naval vessels to outrun threats or close with targets faster than anything diesel-powered could manage. The fuel consumption is staggering. The maintenance requirements are intense. But when national security depends on having the fastest ship in the ocean, the MT-30 delivers. And then, there's the Wersile 31. Imagine an engine the size of a building, producing 10 megawatts, enough to power a small town. The Wersile 31 family represents medium-speed diesels taken to their logical extreme. 8 to 16 cylinder configurations, power, ranging from 4.9 to 10.4 megawatts. These engines deliver extreme cylinder power and record efficiency. Installed power ranges into multiple megawatts, massive numbers normally seen in ships and power plants. Wärtsilä achieved these outputs through decades of refinement in marine diesel technology. Each cylinder is optimized for maximum efficiency and power density. The fuel injection systems operate at pressures that would seem impossible. The turbocharging systems are multi-stage, each compressor feeding the next. These engines represent the pinnacle of large diesel engineering, but none of this is new. In the 1920s and 1930s, you find the Napier Lion, an Aero W12 engine adapted for boats. High specific power for its era, used in record-breaking hydroplanes like Miss Britain and Bluebird. This was an early case of aviation engine power being dropped into boats, and the results were spectacular and dangerous. The Napier Lion produced huge horsepower relative to its displacement. In racing trim, these engines delivered over 1,000 horsepower from designs that predated modern materials and engineering. The boats they powered were essentially death traps, minimally stable hulls with enormous power. But they set speed records that stood for decades and proved that aircraft engines could revolutionize marine propulsion. Then came the Packard V-12s. The Packard Aero V-12 derivatives were installed in boats, including record craft and military vessels like PT boats. These engines produced very high horsepower for small hulls, classic examples of too much engine for the boat installations. The Packard marine engines delivered reliable power in combat conditions while also powering speedboats to record-breaking performances. The Packard V-12s showed that aviation technology could be marinized successfully if you understood the differences between the environments. Aircraft engines run continuously at high power, but in clean air and at altitude where cooling is easy. Marine engines face salt water, humidity, and restricted airflow. Packard solved these problems and created engines that worked reliably in both military and racing applications. So what do all these monsters have in common? Look at these 15 engines and you see a pattern. Power limits exist until someone decides they don't. Every one of these engines was called impossible before it was built. Too much power for the application. Too complex to be reliable. 
too expensive to be practical. Yet they all exist, and most of them work well. The progression from 627 horsepower outboards to 40 megawatt gas turbines shows the enormous range of marine propulsion. All of them represent engineering ambition, meeting the challenge of marine environments. Got a story about running one of these monster engines? Or know of another power plant that belongs on this list? Drop it in the comments below. Remember to subscribe, stay curious, and keep your hand on the throttle because the next wave of engines is already roaring to life.